Hello all, good morning, good evening and good afternoon based on wherever you are. So today we'll be exploring the power of job queues and this is central. And this is based on a request that I received on, on a YouTube video comment. So we'll do multiple videos in this series. In the first video, which we are doing today, we'll just understand what it is, how it works and what are different parameters there. So if, if you know about job queue, maybe this video is not for you and maybe you join in the next video in the series. But we'll continue from there. Before we continue, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe to the channel. So a job queue is basically an abstraction that uses something called as task scheduler from the platform to enable end user to view, create, or modify jobs that can then run in the background. These jobs can be set to run once or on a defined recurrence schedule in the future. Now, if you are still using Dynamics Snap, then the job queues were using something called as NAS, NAS, and starting, if I'm not wrong, BC 13 or BC 14, uh, the job queue behind the scene works with something called as task scheduler. So how it actually works. So a job is run when the task scheduler is running. So let's see it in, 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 in the client so that it starts making sense. So once you are here on your client, just search for job queues, entries, and this will show you all the job queues that has been created. There are five job queues right now. And as I said, behind the scene, these job queues run from something called as task scheduler. So whenever you set a job queue, it automatically defines a scheduled task for that particular job queue. And the job, uh, the task is defined for code unit 448, which is actually the job queue dispatcher code units, which runs the job queue. And in case of there is a failure, then there is a failure code unit ID, which is the job queue error handler. Now the schedule task is not only built for job queue, but you can also use schedule tasks for scheduling your <coughs> activities from code. And this video is not about it, but if you are interested, let me know into the comment section and we'll do a complete separate video about schedule task and how you can use them. So whenever a job queue is set, behind the scene, a scheduled task is created. And then whenever the time comes for the scheduled task, that particular scheduled task runs in your background. Coming back to the job queue entries. Now, what is job queue entries? Let's try to understand uh, how you can set up a thing that you want to run automatically at a predefined time. And what are the different parameters or settings that you have to do? So let's try to create a new one. So when you try to create a new one, you get up with this window where you have a journal tab, a parameter tab, and a recurrence tab. Now the report parameter tab is optional and that's based on what type of object you are running. There are only two types of objects that you can run from a job queue entry. One is of type report and another is of type code unit. So as I said, it's optional. As soon as you choose that you are running a code unit, the report parameter part kind of hides itself automatically. <coughs> so here you define what object type you are running and then you define what object ID you want to run. And you can do a lookup on the object that you would like to run and you'll be able to see that object. Then it automatically populates the object caption and then you can give it a description if needed. Now don't end your discussion here because there is show more. So always open it because there are very important parameters inside this. This parameter string, we'll talk about it in a separate video because it's pretty interesting how uh, extensively you can use parameter string to do some good stuff with job queues also. And then there's a job queue category where you can define um, how you want to organize your different job queues. And these categories can then also be used to make it generic in different scenarios. 
by default microsoft have sales posting retention policies and other as job queues uh, category code but you can just create new with a code and a description to it then the user id is the id of the user who is creating it or who have last changed it so right now it says to my id but if somebody changes this job queue somehow the user id will map to that particular user and that's the reason when you set up job queues on behalf of your customer you should make sure that they start or stop the job queue not you otherwise your id will be used then the maximum number of attempts to run now for some unforeseen reason if a job queue fails this parameter tells you how many times you want system to attempt to run it again and the only situation where it might be unresponsive maybe because it is depending on an external source and which is not available right now so you can define how many times you want system to attempt to kind of run it again if it fails then there is a rerun delay which is in seconds which means how many seconds it need to wait before it tries to rerun the failed job then the last ready status is something we'll see it means when was the last time this job was set to ready then there's an expiration date and time it is the earliest date and time when a job queue entry should be running before this the job queue entry will not run and the date and time need to be specified with am and pm settings so that at this time the job queue will run and then the expiration date and time is after which that date and time the job queue will kind of delete automatically and will not run after that so once it is set to expire the job queue entry will never run the format is again date month time year and that's how it is the job queue timeout is the maximum time that the job queue entry is allowed to run so let's say you are running a report which takes six hours and you have only set one hour here so if <clears throat> it doesn't complete within the timeout hour the job queue will be stopped at that moment and the status will talk about it now let's come to the recurrence because that's important and we'll talk about the report parameter in a while here you define when you want this job to be recurring if it's a recurring job there might be one time job and there might be jobs which you want to recur after a certain date and time so you can define when you want to run it and you can choose whatever works for you there are some jobs that you might run on saturdays and sundays because it's a non-working day and those are complex processes there might be something which is applicable for every day like sending a notice or a warning in case something goes down let's say inventory goes down for a certain item you want to notify someone via an email those kind of thing can be defined here on the recurrence tab now in business central there is a new field added called next run date formula if you set this then you can't define other parameter and they will be reset to default because this is just to define when what is the date formula that you are utilizing to calculate the next run time of this job so here you can define the date formula that will be used to calculate the next time a recurring job will run if you use this date formula all other recurring settings will be cleared so let me show it to you so if i say it like this and then i say my next run date is 1d that means every day you'll see all this will be reset to default and the system will use this field to calculate the next run time of that job the starting time is when you want the earliest time when you want the recurring job to be start ending time when you want to end it at that time if you are not using the next day run uh, next run date formula then you can define how many minutes between the run and that kind of goes down to you have to calculate for 1d how many minutes are there and then you come down to if i'm not wrong 1440 is the number for a, for number of minutes in between and that calculates for a day number of minutes an inactivity time period is when it is inactive and it will be restated so let's say i am creating a new one and before that let's understand the report parameter so if you have chosen report here 
then you can define the output type what you want which is pdf word excel print or if it's a processing only report that's up to you and based on that type of output you'll be able to get the output of that report if you want to print it to a printer then you can specify the printer name here based on the settings that you have on your printers if you would like to limit what how the report should run by using the request space you can actually and let's pick a report uh, let's say top 10 customer or vendor list there will be some oh yeah top 10 customer list now i don't want the top 10 let's say i want top 5 and that's an option in that report so if i would like to do that i can come here and choose this button and this will pop up the request page of that particular report so here i can say that i'm looking for balance and i'm looking for top five customer not 10 and i would like to see the pie chart if i have to apply other filters i can do that as soon as i hit ok these settings will be stored inside this job queue and the job queue will respect those settings when these need to be done now before we run this let me go back and show you one important area here so on your role center page you see a part which is report inbox which is right now set to be empty there's nothing on it so now let's go back to the job queue entries and let's open this one and we'll talk about other things here let's talk about the actions anything that is on hold will not run any changes that you're doing on the job queue will only happen when it is on hold which you can set from here set on hold so if it doesn't set on hold i can make changes on this particular job okay so let me remove this for the time being and i'll come back oh okay okay now if i come here and do a set status to ready that puts it into the queue and it'll also define a scheduled task for this job queue and then based on the earliest start date and time it'll start running so this is that action and once it is ready i'll not be able to make any changes onto the job queue so these are the two actions here restart is just restarting the job queue and run once in foreground if you are testing whatever you are doing you can just run it as a user interface and so you click on it and it'll start running the show error action shows you the last error that has been popped up while running this report if there is any otherwise it'll just be blank same here let's come back in here and see on the list because there are some other actions per job queue you can also see uh, the log entries for all the time that has been ran this job queue has been ran in the past and you can remove the failed entries if needed so the log entries just show you all the logs that has been run fast in the past and then show error the same and everything else the same so let's now create a new job queue this time let's do it for the same report uh, top 10 and let's do customer top 10 and let's run the request page set it to this set it to six set it to pie chart and click ok and i would like my output to be pdf i'm not setting any recurrence to this so remember this and i'm setting it to ready so as soon as i set it to ready it'll start running at this point in time and you'll notice that a new job queue entry has been created and if i come back to this page maybe by then it should has been completed and it is completed but i'll show it to you you'll not notice that report is there now and the reason is because i did not set the recurrence and it understood that once it is ran completely it just need to eliminate itself so i can only see it now into the job queue log entries so if i go to the log entries and i remove the filter because for sure it is filtering for something you'll notice that the customer top 10 entries and let, we can just directly search for it 
for the customer top 10 list has been ran successfully and this report is ran and these are the parameters that were set the output because it was a report is actually visible on your report inbox that there is a customer top 10 list and you can access it so I can actually see it here that it showed me my top five customers with a pie chart and all the details that I wanted and it respected the filters that I applied on the job queue now this may sound a little bit confusing to set every time you want to run a long running report you go to job queue but you actually don't have to so if I come here let's say on my vendors page and search for my top 10 again and let's suppose that this is a big report it is not but let's assume I would like to do it on purchase dollars and I would like to see five vendors and now I know this report is long and I don't want to wait for that long time because I have other things to do so Microsoft have made this provision on each report which have a printable output to actually schedule it in job queue from your request page so once this kind of verifies the number of vendors that I'm setting up I can actually schedule it in the job queue directly from here so I can just do a send to and then here I can use the option to schedule the report click OK and here you are getting a similar view what you see on the job queue entries page a little bit different but here I'm choosing the PDF I don't have a printer I don't want to rerun it in the future but if I want to I can define these parameters and then click OK what I'm setting right now is again a one-time job not a recurring job so as soon as I click OK it should come and appear in my report inbox as the processing ends which haven't ended now so let's see on the scheduled task so if you notice that there is this job queue entry which is telemetry okay that means it has been done so let's come back here and now you see here top vendor list if I open this up I should be able to see my top five vendors which are requested on that page and there's no that this is the chart that I'm seeing now in case of reports you will be able to get the output into your report inbox when you run it from your job queue and those output will be in the format that you have chosen here on your request parameter section PDF Word Excel or print now in case of print you have to define your printer and so on and so forth if you have an online printer available right which I don't or I can choose any format that makes sense if it is a processing only rep report then I can still choose it to none which means that it is not a process it is not a printable output so I don't need an output in the similar way the same set of options are available when I choose a code unit which can do a lot than report and we will kind of talk about it as we go forward so while watching this video if you think that there are some questions that were not answered in the kind of the first video of the job queue let me know into the comment section in the next video of the series we'll talk specifically about code units and especially around the parameters which are available on the job queue and how you utilize them and how you use the true power of job queue by using those parameters into the code unit so stay connected and I'll be back with the next video sooner than later and you know the drill if you like the content hit the like button if you think this is important for other developers and consultants to know then share this video on your social media accounts and if you haven't then please do subscribe to the channel so till next time have a great day and keep learning and I'll be back with the next video sooner than later